Good morning, welcome back to the channel. We're looking at some database normalization today. And so I have a sheet of raw data we're working with. We're gonna talk about how we can do normalization from raw data to first normal form or 1NF. And so as you can see right here, I have in the normalization data, I have a bunch of just raw information about some class information. And so we have columns for section, course number, course name, seat count, number of students, room, class time, meeting days, instructor, students, and meeting day. So what we're looking at right here is when we're talking about normalization, we're going from the raw data form to our first normal form, there's two things we're really looking at doing. The first thing we're looking at doing is we wanna make sure that if there's any repeating groups that we can remove them from the actual columns of information. And so as you can see right here, section is on its own, AM, Brighton, PM, AM, Brighton, and there's nothing repeating that information anywhere across that, so there's definitely not a repeating column there. My course number, CS14 to 10, doesn't match anything listed across the way here. Seat count and number of students in the room, those are two different questions that they're looking for. So they're different values of information, so we're totally okay. They're all numbers though, and same with room. But those, these numbers, don't. this is not the same value of this or as this, so there's definitely no duplicated columns or repeated groups there. My class time doesn't repeat anywhere this way or that way. Meeting days, B, oh, B, oh, here's a repeating group. Meeting days and meeting day. Oh, so that, that information right there is repeated, and so it's the same all the way down for every single thing. Boom, 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 boom. So that's a clue right here that that is a, a repeating group. It's a column that we don't need. And so we have the magic power right here when I do the idea of normalization. This is something that's not gonna be in there, so I can mark this right here. I'm gonna just do a strike through on this. So I can do a format on that, like boom, boom. That's something I don't want. I'm not gonna keep that when I do all my normalization because that is unnecessary. So that's the idea that we don't wanna repeat that. It's something we don't wanna have happen. Now, with the next thing we're looking for, after we look for repeating groups, we wanna look for uh, the idea of atomicity, or atomic data. And atomic data means we can't break it apart into any single individual things. And the easiest way, the fastest way to look for that is when we're looking at your raw data, do you see anything that has multiple values that are separated either by semicolons or commas? And we have that right here in the students column. In column J, students, we see we have JJ, Grant, Allen, Tyler, P, etc. Oh, these are all students that are inside AMCS 1410. And then I have, again, I have JJ, Grant, Tyler, C, and Tyler, P. Oh, that's a real big clue that this is the same type of information, but it's just been squished into one column. And so when we're talking about atomic data, each of these different values right here should actually get their own row. Because when we're talking about a row column intersection in a database, when we're talking about atomicity and we're going from raw data to first normal form or 1NF, every single row column thing should have exactly one value in it. Now, that doesn't mean the letter J, the letter J, then a comma, then a space, then a G. No, we're not talking that atomic or even the, even the bits we're not making up. We're saying, oh, there's JJ, that's one thing. Grant is one thing, Allen is one thing. And so we want to break that down into those pieces. And so what we're gonna do, and this is one of the few times actually copy paste in class because data entry, we don't need to copy, write that over and over again. But when we're talking about that, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our headers for all this information. We're not gonna keep meeting day the second copy because that's a repeating group and we don't wanna keep that. So I'm gonna go down here and paste that over. And so I have those same bits of information. Those are the columns I'm looking for. But in this one right here with JJ Grant, Allen and Tyler P, who happen to be my AMCS 1410 class, I'm gonna grab that information over. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it down here. Boom. And so it's section, course, course name, seat count. They all match directly like they should. But in students, I'm gonna put each individual value in that so I have atomic data. So I have JJ gets a value here, Grant gets a value here, Allen gets a value here, Tyler P a value here, and so on and so forth. That dot, 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 I don't have the values, but you know there's more values that actually exist. And then because all of them are also in that CS 1410 course, I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab that down and paste it across for all those values. And now we have taken this non-atomic column and we atomized it. And so we now have the first beginnings of our 1NF. We're gonna do that same process for all the remaining rows that are existing inside this. Now, this is simply just a simple example. If you're talking about converting more raw data, you'd probably have multiple columns you'd have to atomize or turn into individual values, and possibly they may be even into multiple columns worth of values if they have, for example, different types of information that are stored inside them. And we'll see that in other videos as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna go from Brighton over here up to the instructor because that's the information that every single row has. I'm gonna paste that over here as well, boom. And then I'm gonna go for that and do Max, Chris, Mark, Majid, and Stockton. So, Max, Mark, Chris, Majid, Stockton. And I want that out of order, but that's okay because when we're talking about databases, the order of the entries themselves does not matter. 
when we're talking about database, it's simply that each individual value of every row column intersection has the appropriate value, and each individual row is its whole entry. And so the order of those entries does not matter when we're talking about this. So I can take that now value that we have for Max, since he's the student that was in the first of that um, list right there, and I apply that for all those other students that are in the Brighton class right there as well. And so now I have an expanded bit of data. So my data set is getting taller, but it's more filterable. It's something I can actually use and search by. So if I uh, even to put this inside Excel and filter on this information or using it like I'm in, in Google Drive using Google Sheets, I can filter by these little values and actually find the information as we go through that. So let's do this again for these last three classes. So I'm going to go over here and grab that next chunk right there for that PM group, paste it over here, and then for each individual in the students column. So we have Vlad, Chandler, and Logan. Let's fix the typo on that. And they all have the same course, so I just copy that information from here to the end. And so their values are all the same for that. Then I do the same thing again for um, the next AM group right here, copy that over and paste that in. And then for each of the values are listed in that, JJ, Grant, Tyler C, Tyler P, and Christina. Oh, okay. So JJ, Grant, and again, order doesn't matter, so we'll do Christina next, and then Tyler P, and then Tyler C. Because again, order doesn't matter the actual columns as long as the, each row that they have has all the right values. And so I can do the column entry itself out of order as long as each row itself that we're working with has all the correct information because each row is one entry in this new table. And we're talking about the transition from raw data to 1NF. What we're basically doing is we're taking out any duplicated column or information and any combined non-atomic data. So we have a single table that has all the individual rows where each row is unique and valid across all the information. So we have two more that we have to do from the non-raw data. So we'll grab those last two right here. So we'll grab that over here, the Brighton class, paste that over and put the people from Brighton. And we'll start backwards this time. So it's totally out of order because order doesn't matter as long as we get each individual value when we're talking about from the original structure. And so now I've got all those values from that row and column intersection that were combined and they weren't in a single atomic form. They're all atomic. And do the last row right here from the original raw data set and paste it over here. And we'll put the last values in here of Vlad, Zach, Taylor, and Marx. And copy each of those values, copy and paste. And so now we've taken the original raw data set right here where it had a duplicated column of information. It had a column that had um, non-atomic data because I have multiple students listed in a single row column intersection. And we can easily identify that because the use of commas right there, it's one of the greatest ways to identify that we have non-atomic data. Every other column itself was all, no, oh, it's just one single value and they don't repeat anything across the things. And so it's all right there. So now we have from our raw data to our first normal form and we have, we have now information we actually use for that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and save my work right here because it's always good to save the work. And I'm gonna make a new sheet so we can go on to our next video. And I'm gonna make this, it's gonna go from raw data to 1NF. To 1NF. This next one's gonna be from 1NF to 2NF. So take a look at that on the next video. Have a great day and we'll go from there.